Good morning, everybody. This is Luke with Owls. As you can see today, I'm smiling ear to ear. I'm really excited because I'm standing here next to Paul. Paul is the owner of Horn Creek Farms. They just, uh, they just won the first place in the High Times Hemp Cup for their lifter and Paul has been very good to bring us here to their facility and we are going to go in depth about a lot of what happens here but first let me uh, pass it over to you Paul if you want to tell us a little bit about how you came into hemp um, how Horn Creek started and uh, yeah let's go from there yeah well Horn Creek <clears throat> It's a family operation. I'm an owner along with uh, the other family members, so it gets a, it's a democratic process, which is difficult. Uh, but it, what I was telling Luke is that in 2013, I fell off a roof and I had an injury, and the injury was treated just with the, the typical pain meds at the time, the opioids. And so we found CBD and we really started exploring it. We were doing handmade salves and that sort of thing. And it was so effective. It was just sort of like opening up a magic box. So then we went from, you know, portion of an acre to eight acres to now 15 and we're loving things. Great, great. So um, what do we have, where, what do we, what do so, we have here yes. that we're, when we look at this? So this is the family, uh, previous family business, which was a smoked meats company. We made jerky and we did a number of uh, gifts and that sort of thing. And as we got excited about the CBD as opposed to the jerky, CBD sort of infiltrated, got it moved in. So, so right. now more than half the building is CBD related. Right. Uh, okay, Paul, so tell us a little bit about uh, what do we see here? Well, these, uh, these are the items, gosh, we to assess what we've got here. These are the ones uh, that we've been creating. So we do cultivar specific extractions. Now what, does, now what does that mean for somebody who might not? Well, you know, here's the thing about CBD is that I have there's so many things I don't know sure. about it. And so cultivars uh, have their own signature, primarily terpene profile, mm -hmm. is what's different from one to another. Yeah, so each, each strain, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, so these are all done with special sauce and Hawaiian haze cultivars. Mm -hmm. One using one, one using another, and it's not that there's. It's basically where we started with this, mm -hmm. the efficacy of the of the salves. Yep. Um, and so we're sticking with them, and you know we're looking to discover things about what special sauce oil derived products good for, uh, etc. So we've got. You know, she does a tea with a tincture. We do teas. We have those oh, at the night. Teas are great. Oh, they're really That's great. They're they are just have one hand on your bed when you take them because they're just like pump. Um, and then the tinctures that we do are pretty straightforward. Um, the CBDA capsules. Uh, so leaving it in the acidic form. Well, this is this is huge. Um, this is something that we have only just started uh, building off of too and it's great to come and see another company like Horn Creek where CBDA is far more bioavailable to you than CBD. Once it is activated, meaning that the carbon dioxide is removed uh, through decarboxylation, your, the bioavailability goes completely down. So if you were to, for instance, take just this was straight CBD and there was 100 milligrams in here, only around 20 milligrams would be processed through your body when you eat it. Now, if you use CBDA, that's 100x more bioavailable than just regular CBD. So, and, and, and not only that, but the fact that you have the actual oil extracted from the plant that is, and not only that, but the fact that it's grown right here, um, and that you can really dial in the process yeah. of, if it's not like, oh, well, where did I buy this from? And just trusting the fact that, hey, did you use pesticides, or not even did you use pesticides, but hey, what type of nutrients did you use? Mm. Um, I know you have a very specific way of growing that really drew me to Horn Creek, and I'm not sure if, uh, if, if any of you, obviously everyone's heard of organic, 
Um, but there is also another level that is called biodynamic. And if you could just touch a little bit on what biodynamic is, yeah. uh, like, you know, at a you know, thousand feet view for someone who's never heard yeah. of that. Yes, I mean, so biodynamic is, um, it, it, there are two components to it. And the, the one that we really uh, cling to is a, a very intuitive, which is that uh, any ecosystem, a farm is an ecosystem, any ecosystem is in balance. When you walk up to it before you screw around with it, it's in balance. The things, the plants, the animals, the insects have all found sort of a, a way to thrive in that environment and don't mess it up. Just sure. don't mess it up. Sure. And so, granted, you're going to scratch the surface and put your plants in, you're going to introduce various other things, but minimize that and then utilize the things that are on the farm. So, one basic thing that we do is called a beetle bank. And a beetle bank is where we uh, have a run right through the middle of the farm that is a great environment for the bugs to live in. Mm -hmm. And those bugs are... So you want the bugs there. We love the bugs because those bugs will go out, they're beetles, and they will go out at night. In the evening, in the later summer, you'll see them fly out to prey on the bugs that we don't want. Right? right, and so the aphids and that sort of thing will come in. So we nurture those environments. You keep as much biodiversity as you can, but but if I could take that all back and say the focus is that you look at the soil and you treat the soil like your primary crop, and you you feed the soil, you nurture the soil, so it's a living environment, a living thing. Then the soil in turn feeds the plants. Mm -hmm. So you don't look at oh. Plants need nitrogen, I'm gonna throw nitrogen out there. You just keep your soil healthy and they do the work for it. That's huge, yeah. that's huge. And so I suppose in, in that case, when you are utilizing other, as I said, whether it's insects, whatever uh -huh. it is that's actually in that environment, of course then there's no need for, oh, we need to come in with this sort of like, we're getting, we have an issue right now with aphids or something and we need to hit it with you yeah. know, some sort of craziness. Like often I find that a lot of people who end up having to use pesticides or, and just obviously you don't use any pesticides or anything like that, but um, some people, they just don't either have the knowledge or suddenly they get to these extremes of yeah. like, I'm gonna lose my crop yep. and it's, I need to right. do this or I'm gonna lose everything. Yep. But you are continually treating this like it's not like oh we're just growing this season and let's forget about the soil yep. it's really the whole entire time the soil is a part of it yep. and it just ends up working as one ecosystem and once you can identify one issue it's naturally just going to repair well, you know, I, with the way that's interesting that you say that because the way that I look at it is um, again you go back to that balance so why why do you have the influx of the aphids well something's out of balance sure. and so and it, and it didn't go out of balance the day before the aphids showed up. It went out of balance, you know, it started out of balance a month prior to that. Mm -hmm. And it got more and more out of balance and then suddenly it had all these aphids. And every ecosystem, you know, it's just a matter of size. The Rogue Valley is an ecosystem and the huge influx of hemp and hemp cultivation has really facilitated aphids and various other predatory pests mm -hmm. and year after year they get it gets larger the problems get larger so you just want to look at that in advance and take care of things and watch things and I give full credit to my wife she's got some unnatural ability to look at plants and look at environments and pick out what's going on and get ahead of the curve and and that's key and now, you know, one thing I, I, I want to bring up here with the biodynamic uh, that I know we were having a brief conversation outside is, yeah. is, is this, uh, is the astrological yeah. aspect of it too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I definitely feel that it is something far more intuitive, maybe on a, on more on a feminine side. I think sometimes for the men, we can be like, ah, oh, uh, whatever that stuff disc. is, yeah, 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 whatever it is. But there is this aspect where really, uh, planting with the lunar cycles and can you can you explain that a little bit further no no okay <laughs> no, cool but I so, will I'll try okay so cool. so here's so here's here's my philosophy on that is that uh, there are a lot of things I don't know and there are a lot of smart people that have figured things out before me and so you know I mean CBD is a perfect example of how little I know 
you know, the terpenes and the other things, and you sure. sort of have to go by faith that these people know what they're talking about, and then as you gain wisdom, gain knowledge, you sort of say, oh, okay, I get it now. The, the planting by the lunar cycle is an area that I'm taking on faith, because sure. I don't really grasp how, the hows and the whys of it, but like, for example, to plant, uh, you know, this planting this year was uh, within the lunar cycle. Mm -hmm. The, you know, one other aspect that, of biodynamics is you'll, you'll find a lot of things about uh, cow horns, you know, burying I mean, here cow is horns. Burying the cow horns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the, what's, can you explain well, the minerals? I, you know, my wife and I talk about that a lot. And it's sort of, it's sort of adopted this uh, metaphysical sort of thing. Yep. And she's like, no, it's the minerals in the cow horn. That's what the soil needs. Yes. And she, you know, she's she's got that feminine side, but she's also very practical. And she's like, no, there's all sorts of things going on in there that is really good for the soil. So again, it's back to feeding the soil. Well, one thing that I'll say on that is that, you know, we can grasp very clearly. Okay, well, hey, we looking at we're looking at the soil, and what do we need? We want balance. Mm -hmm. Now, I while I may not be able to comprehend or understand it. I can absolutely think of, okay, well, this is, we're looking at, at the soil level, right? But when we look at this on like a global level or on a universal yeah. level, I think it's fair to say that there has to be some level or roles of balance in where the stars are or something like that yeah, and right. when you're planting and that if you can do so in harmony mm -hmm. with, call it the universe, the seasons, the moon, it can give you something quite unique and what do you know yeah your lifter won first yeah, right. place right. in uh the high times hemp, uh, hemp cup yeah um so okay let us uh so why don't you take us in and show us a little bit about what you've yeah. got going on you you wanted to talk about uh the salves here you have a lot of different types of salves yeah um well, well, what's what? How do you know which one to pick, or, or how do you how do you decide well, on what's what? You know, we basically this is this is where it all started, and this is this is the product that uh, that kind of developed the farm for us, opened the doors to the farm, just because I used it on my own injury, mm -hmm. and it was just like magic. Uh, and everything else is a reiteration of that, a lower. Uh, uh, 20, is that 20,000 milligrams? 20,000 milligrams in this jar, so it's 5,000 milligrams. Whoa, that's 5, incredible. Per well, a lot of, yeah. well, this is the thing, I see a lot of cream, often, more often than not, what I see is, I see businesses that are offering low dose, which isn't necessarily enough. Right, if you get like a 200 milligram CBD, uh, a, a 200 milligram CBD topical, that might not do very much for you. Yeah. What I've been reading a lot lately is, is actually that dose is maybe like 500 milligrams is what you need. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got a 20,000 milligram four ounce container there, I mean, that's probably the highest I've seen of any topicals. I mean, so so here's my here's my take is that we, we are uh, shockingly, um, we have a shocking lack of research about the dosage, right? Sure. We just don't know, and, sure. and especially with topicals, where you also have the the issue of how how are you absorbing it? Yep. Um, we're the farm. We we have the flour. We make we uh, have the product extracted. We have plenty of material. Sure. I don't know of any downside to having too much. Sure. So we put a bunch in there, and yeah. because I want to make sure we've got a we've got a small window. We've got all these people who are hearing all the buzz about CBD, mm -hmm. and if they try it and they go down to the store and they pay 80 bucks for something that has 300 milligrams per ounce mm -hmm. and it has no effect, they're not going to try it again. Sure. So I'm like, we want to make sure that they get their, the best uh, experience possible. And now for this, um, can you, with regards to the CBD, is this like full spectrum CBD? Yeah. Does that still have the terpenes and everything yeah. in there? Yeah, we, we try hard to keep the terpenes. Um, the, you know, the, that's a really good issue about the full spectrum. Um, and full spectrum, those terms aren't really uh, set. No. Yet. Yes. I mean, to me, full spectrum, everything. That's everything, including the THC. Yes. Then they go, then they take it to a distillate. Well, that removes the terpenes. Absolutely. And so full spectrum to me is that original raw extraction. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's so important because what I can tell you is that this is very effective. This with a little bit of THC in it, yes, above the legal limits, yep. is way more effective. I wish Absolutely. we could do that. Yes, and so uh, so full spectrum should be as a term should be, you know, something we adhere to.
You know what you say is interesting. When when I went through the whole when I went through the whole experience with my leg, um, I tried everything. So they ended up taking part of the muscle away. So I had to. So can we yeah? Can we just like take a look here because this is a serious serious yeah. scar i mean your leg must have been seriously fractured yeah well no it wasn't that's the thing it wasn't it, huh? i mean it was a, it was a compound fracture but it was like it was just a standard break yeah um but the problem is i went into the hospital and they uh, a situation developed called compartment syndrome mm -hmm. where your leg swells and it can't get rid of it and basically cuts off the blood flow and kills, oh, kills um. itself so overnight it, i lost the blood flow to the leg and i lost all this muscle here so I had to relearn how to walk, you know, and because you'd be surprised. Well, it's balance. Everything is a system, right? Yes. And so you take away your ability to lift your foot and you go all wonky. And so my, my family is all Western medicine, they're physicians. Yep. And so I said, okay, the Chinese and all these people knew stuff. So it was a leap of faith. It was like, okay, we're gonna try acupuncture. We're gonna try this, we're gonna try that, we're gonna try all these things. And it was phenomenal what stuff works, you know? So getting back to this thing about the biodynamics and the lunar cycle and the yep. the uh, horn in the soil and mm -hmm. all those things, it's like, let's go all the way and let's find out. And and so, you know, as you point out, well, this whole year has been really lucky for us in, in awards, you know, the cultivation classic and that yep. sort of thing. And who knows, maybe it's got something to do with it. Yes, absolutely. So this is, this is the lifter. So this is the lift. I can already smell. I can already. It's got a very nice smell here. That's our drying or our. Uh, You're rehydrate. giving away trade secrets there now. You're yeah. giving away oh, trade no, the secrets. Tortilla, the, the tortilla, tortilla is the is trade it, secret, it, everybody. Yeah. And if it's too dry, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of lemon or something in there, yes. isn't there something to rehydrate it, right? Or if you want, you can buy just crazy bovita packs. Yeah. Whoa. Well, we do bovita packs also. That's still a little It's bit still amazing. Come on. I mean, can yeah. we can we grab the I mean, look, this is the thing. I find that the 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 the, the people who grow it or the people who when we manufacture products, we are our biggest critics. Oh yeah. And and so when you look at this, first of all, everybody, this looks like straight cannabis. Mm. Right? Like look at this nug. Look at that. This is hemp. Right? I'm not sure if anyone I'm not sure if anyone remembers, but like you know, two or three years ago, hemp was this like swaggy, like ditch weed. And now this is what it has turned into. And it is people like Paul who've been growing this with good intentions, with good with the with the right environment that is now really giving us just some of the best, uh, some of the best uh, hemp you can possibly buy. And not only that, but the one thing I'm always trying to emphasize here at Owls is how special Southern Oregon is. And Southern Oregon has, in my opinion, one of, if not the best growing climate in the world. And you know, everyone typically talks about the Emerald Triangle, right? That's basically in Northern California. Well, where we're at is really the Emerald Crown. And that really comes from Northern California all the way up to Grants Pass. And you've got the areas where we are right now in, you know, you're talking about Williams, Jacksonville, where you have just such a, an amazing climate to grow. The, and not only that, but the people who've been here, guess what? They were growing cannabis for, <laughs> for decades, hundreds of years out here, right? And, and now, guess what? I think I'd like the people who have been growing cannabis for years to grow hemp versus people who maybe have uh, you know been growing corn for years and just don't, yes, it's great to be able to mass produce things and I think that that has its place. And it has its place for, for instance, isolating cannabinoids and you want bulk production, no terpenes or anything like that, sure, it has its place. But what we are doing here at Owls and what is happening here at Horn Creek Farms is we're going for the higher tier. We're going for the smokable. We're going for the best of the best. And as you can see, a 20,000 milligram salve is something that you rarely ever see. And I mean, this, I wish there, you know, come on, if, if Elon Musk or technology can somehow speed up so we can get some smell-o-vision here because 
really this is this is unbelievable um and what other and can you actually i can see over here if you could show us some of these coas it's oh, always yeah. so beautiful to be able to see um the coas and just show your you know your tracking and you know just basically all of this yeah well i think it's i mean everybody wants testing you know everything so uh, the other half of what we do is about food Yes. Everybody wants to know about their food. Sure. What am I eating? Where was it produced? How was it produced? Same thing with the with the hemp. So we have multiple tests on each cultivar, and what we found is that customers really want multiple cultivars, and they love new ones. So this year we're doing. Uh, I don't know if you know East Fork cultivars. I've heard uh, of them. Yeah. Yeah, they're a really great group of guys down in Cave Junction area. They do the busters, and and was that them? Norm. Nor, uh, no. Just what what are some of the strains that they're doing this year? Uh, well, they're doing for uh, hemp. They're doing yep. Oregon sweet gum. They're doing Oregon guava. Oh, nice. Uh, sour pineapple. We did ca some canasu, and we did seven of their stuff. Seven of their uh, items last year. We're continuing with three more. Uh, then we're doing some tap roots, uh, mm -hmm. cherry chocolate chip, pruno. Uh, OG These are sounding like cannabis oh, strains. Okay. This is They're just totally, hemp. Yeah, yeah. This is hemp, and so this is the other thing which I've been really noticing is that. You know, a couple of years ago, the hemp really hasn't been grown for its terpenes, right? Yeah. It, originally, it was just like, whatever, this is hemp, it's industrial. But now it is really turned into these terpene profiles are now beginning to really come out and we're getting yeah. these new phenomenal strains, yep. which before was only ever thought of in cannabis. <laughs> um, and I think it is because I, I think it's important to have those varieties because Oregon CBD, I think, is hands down, you know, the best uh, when it comes to their genetics. Mm -hmm. I think they've just been doing it for the longest. However, everyone and their mother has Lifter, it's so White funny. CBG, yeah. you know, and so when you can get these smaller, like local, uh, you know, seed producers, yeah. that's really going to set you apart. But, and, but the challenge is, just like we were talking about, you know, wanting to know what am I getting? Wanting to vet your source. Uh, when, as you know, probably a few years ago, there were a lot of seed producers that didn't have all the research done. No. And they were throwing out non-feminized seeds and various other things. High THC seeds. Yeah, right. And it caused a lot of grief. So Oregon CBD is hands down the king. And I yeah. will point out that, you know, cultivation... I don't know if you knew this, but the, our Sour Space Candy won Credible Cultivar at the Cultivation No, Classic. I didn't. So, so if you're familiar with that award, it's a triple blind. You don't know the farm. You don't know the cultivar. You also don't even know if it's THC or CBD. And this Whoa. was the first time that a, T, that a CBD won. cultivar won this normally THC category. Stop it. I and can't so I know, and, and it was like with 0.8% total THC. Yeah. And I, I got to give credit to those guys. Now, the fact that the consumer is just like, oh, I can have more Sour Space Candy, it's like, well, it's a great product. Yes. And, and so we're gonna continue with that as our mainstream yep. uh, products, and then uh, we bring these other ones in, and we nurture those and see where we go with those and I think, a, And I think a, a, an important point that you made there, though, too, is, yes, you can, everybody can get a seed, and they can put it in the mm -hmm. ground, and they can pour some water on it, and they can say, yeah, we grew out of Sour Space Candy too. However, if it's not grown in, in Southern Oregon, or just again, if it's not grown in, if it's grown in a different climate, mm -hmm. you're gonna get different terpene profiles, right. you're gonna get different uh, nug structures, depending on how much, there's, uh, if there's too much wind, right. how bulky the nugs can get. And so again, it's like, yeah, you can get the Sour Space Candy, you know, all around here, but guess what? It's not the Horn Creek sour space county. You know, you, you speak to that region and we get visitors from all over the country, all over the world, and I always ask them, you know, what are you finding as you travel around? And they say, we're finding the best stuff in Oregon and specifically in Southern Oregon. Yep. You know, the biggest nugs, the best terpene profile. Why is that? What is that? I don't know. All I know is that with dumb luck, we stumbled across having a farm <laughs> and the best place to grow. And so, we're working it. We're going to grow as much as we can. And, you know, you talked about the big production. You know, we've been in food. We've been in a number of other industries. Mm -hmm. Being big is probably fun and nice. Sure. But artisan, you know, doing this yes. boutique farm yes. where you 
you know, we don't have names for the plants yet, but you know, just knowing your plants, knowing oh, this row is doing well, mm -hmm. nurture this, um, it's just more fun. And I think that the most important thing that I've seen over the years and what the best hemp has been grown, it's the one where the soil is really cared for because it's not like monocropping. Right, I'm at, do you do cover crops or anything yeah, like yeah. that? So, so just uh, can we touch briefly on what a cover crop is and its importance? Because monocropping, which happens across the world, is basically think of like large scale agriculture. Basically, you just grow one thing in it and then that's it. And yeah. how does that affect the soil? And, and it's all and, balance. I mean, yeah. it's all balance. It is nature is about balance. Nature mm -hmm. abhors a vacuum, uh, an imbalance, and it will fill it with something else. And so we've got, we actually have uh, not only a cover crop in the off season, but we have essentially cover crops in the main season. We've got something growing out there called purslane, and mm -hmm. each plant introduces its own fingerprint with yep. the soil. And like I say, it's a balance. Purslane chose this place, mm -hmm. and we encourage it, and it's been really so it grows alongside, it grows. Yeah, we'll show it to you, and it's edible. It's a, it's, you, people use it in salads. I, yeah, I was hearing, because I was hearing some, I don't know what it was, chamomile, mm. or something that can uh, greatly increase terpene production if you, if you co-grow it. Uh, I don't know if that's why, I mean, we had a nuts terpene profile on, um, I think it was, I think it was the lifter. It was mm -hmm. like 5%. It was so high. That That's had, incredible. Was so You're high, like, what's going on with the testing? I, I had the guy do it again. I was like, this has got to be wrong. And it yeah. came back within a quarter percent. And so what, is it because of that? I don't know. I think so. I really think so. Because as I said, and there was a, there was a family, there's a family here. They do the tinctures and stuff. I forget what their name is. The sisters. Mm. I can't remember the name, but they came to the Southern Oregon Cannabis Com uh, Commerce Mixer. Mm -hmm. And they spoke about this mm. and how these, the, again, it's all about this synergistic effect where rather than this like bulk, how are we going to make so much money? Yeah, if I grow like 150 acres and it's all oh. one strain and then you know what? And then more often than not, those people end up being so occupied and busy that it's like just got everything out. Okay, now the soil is just going to basically just you suck everything out of it right. and then it's just left and so when you can plant a cover crop yep. you're basically saying thank you very much here's, here's some, some rejuvenation for yep. you here's some food for yourself here's some variety here's because, some variety because you know all the the pests the disease the pathogens etc etc once you start to go out of balance they you know they will really take over and so going against monocropping, adding all these various different things in there really helped stabilize. So Whitney will also put at the end of each row some flowers, some various other plants. It serves to to add whatever it is, whatever magic it is that variety mm -hmm. adds, but also she chooses uh, varieties that are more appealing and more available to the bugs. Mm -hmm. So the the uh, bugs that, that are eating the plants. Mm -hmm. So basically putting things out there that are a better meal for them. It's like, okay, Here's our hemp. We love our hemp. Don't touch our hemp. Here's this wonderful flower. Go, go, go eat that. Please leave us alone. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. go over there, please. But, but you know what we saw, which was so painful in the early years, is we saw these guys come in and say, well, if I can make money on one acre, why wouldn't I do 300? Sure. And, oh, what a nightmare. Not in Southern Oregon, at least. It's not, it is not the place for that. Yeah. In maybe Kansas Nebraska, yeah. or somewhere else where you've got huge cornfields. You know what? I think hemp is great. I think it remediates the soil. I think it can clean up a lot of the stuff, but it is not for that. Maybe industrial hemp growing for the fiber, yeah. maybe for that. But Southern Oregon, again, coming back to this, and I, I hate to you know repeat it again, but you know the, some of the best wines, same thing, yeah, right? right? You want to have it grown in a region which is great for growing. And I know, and at least where I hope this is going to go, is that. Uh, Appalachians, just like you have the regions yeah. for Pinot Noir, right. is going to be, well, hey, you know what? Yes, this has this stamp. And this is grown in whatever, as I said, the Emerald Crown or wherever this region is. And this is what it takes to have this stamp. Mm -hmm. If you want to grow it in your own way, you do that. You're not going to get this stamp. You're not going to call it Champagne. You're not going to call yeah. it Pinot Noir. And at the end of the day, I, I envision this as... 
people come and say, whoa, I flew into the, the, the Emerald Crown in Southern Oregon. And, you know, I went to Horn Creek Farms and we walked through those fields and the smell of the, the terpenes. And then we went up to Owls and we saw the extraction process and making the products. And, and then guess what? And we can also bring them around to THC farms or recreational yeah. farms. And I see a huge amount of tourism right. and it's like you go back and tell your friends and oh my god and we sample this and we it's sample so, that and it's just it's like, so funny we had uh, last year especially we'd be out there working in the fields and uh, we're on a, a main road and yep. people would just stop and they would come in and they would start walking around asking questions and and the first few times it was funny then it was like get off of my we're, property we're, please we're, we're working, working. so my daughter who's the uh, pr queen yeah would give them a tour and these like random people from massachusetts and various other places just oh what's this what's this it's got a great tourism potential yeah we should go out to the farm yes i love that um can you quickly just show me like for instance a, just a lifter mm -hmm. where's your where's the where's lifter looking? let's see okay he's got it organized here very Let's see here. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. We got the Hawaiian haze. Here it is. So lifter, th I think this is the one. Four point six percent. And this, just, just so everybody knows, right? Um, uh, we have done such an abundant amount of testing, and typically, even, even testing cannabis. And what you'll actually find is, is that. You know, if you were to test uh, flour, 1% would be considered like you're doing good, you know, or not doing good, but that's uh, not doing good when you look at this, right? But that's more like an industry standard for flour, maybe two, 2.5. Yeah. And some of the people I've seen it like 2.8, it's typically actually grown indoors. Yeah, right. And they really have everything dialed with every single thing in 2.8. Sometimes extracts are like, you know your shatters or anything like that maybe like 3.5 percent maybe four but to have flour that's already starting at 4.5 i'd love to extract this i'd love to i can only imagine what this is like mm -hmm. and um and then not only that but i see here there's just such a huge amount of terpenes i mean it's really i've never Far ends. I've never even heard of some of these. <laughs> and I, and when God going into, and I'm trying to do my best with, with the Owls team here. It's like the terpenes is like talk about cannabinoids. Like we can test for like yeah. you know maybe eleven or twelve of them. But when you come to the terpenes, I mean it's like look, if you can figure it out, okay, myrcene, okay, this is going to be more sedating, more relaxing, right, more calming, better caryophylline, anti-inflammatory. But once you start linalool, limonene, but once you start getting real deep, in, it's like, okay, forget about some of these. So I just try to pick out a few. But this terp, um, this, uh, so this hemp tested 25.29% total cannabinoids. And to, it really impressive here is the total THC is only 074 Typically what you'll see is, is that as the CBD increases, oh, yeah. there's a point where, whether that's a 10 to one, a hundred to one, right. if, you're, if your plant was 30%, the THC would have to be one, yeah. right? And so you here have, and it's actually no Delta nine, so it's THCA compliant. So this whole thing with total THC and 0.3 and THCA in some states are, are still THCA, so everything's totally fine. Right. Other states are total THC. Um, I know Oregon is going to be going to one percent from what uh, from what I've gathered, but um, just really, really impressive. Really, really impressive here. Um, okay, well, let's go check out the farm. Yeah. Let's go check out the farm. Uh, so we we've, we've made CBD jerky. I think that's incredible. Yeah. So tell us, like, so first of all, we've got Gary West. Tell tell us just a little bit because I think it's not every day. You go to a, you know, you go to like, and this is, is it's completely new for me because I was like, okay, we'll go see the packaging facility, right? You think of, oh, you'll see the flower, you'll see this. You come in and just straight away, I mean, the vibe in here is something very special. And now we've got all this jerky. And I also see, what's this, you were a finalist in, yeah. a, in a competition? Fancy food, fancy food award. So, so we, made, we made jerky, so that's the, uh, and it was funny too, because that's like the Gourmet Food Association that they do a show in San Francisco and New York. Yeah. And, um, and here we were showing up making jerky, which in some parts of the world is sort of like, 
it was low level. Sure. We were making it out of Wagyu, you know, basically. Uh, the same there, this is just premium, yeah. premium, premium, premium. If you don't know what Wagyu is, Wagyu is basically the best of the best beef that you can possibly get. The cows live wonderful lives. They get the best foods, massage, dries, yeah. and it's like... Well, it's the same cattle that they make Kobe beef from, but Kobe yep. is like champagne. Sure. There's no such thing as Kobe grown outside the Kobe region. Gotcha. And so Wagyu is the Tajima breed of cattle. That's mm -hmm. one of the breeds. So we use the Tajima. And, and you know, now is that, is that in Oregon marble. or is that, is that in... Yeah. Yeah, the, so you the, bring the, the cattle over here? Yeah, they're grown here, Snake River Farms, yep. grows them. Uh, races them around. Sure. And so we use that, but our main line is, you know, just a premium choice grade of beef, and we do it all by hand. You know, it's, look, life, I mean, you may as well do quality, right? It's a lot more fun to have premium quality. Hey, you, you know what? It. I mean, real knows real, and I can, I can agree with you, but you know what? There's so many others that the quick, fast way, which is, again, it has its place, but I don't think it's in Southern Oregon, and it's certainly not happening in here. No. So, um, no. great, so. Take that. And oh, then, you're the uh, man. Thank you, thank you. And then what, do we like hot stuff? Hey, yeah, you yeah, I'll take the, I'll take the, uh, or the teriyaki, I'll try that. I'll try the teriyaki. There you go. You're the best. Oh, you're the man. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, All right, so it's not, you know, owls and jerky is not normally something that we'd be talking about on the channel, but I mean, this here is like, Mm. This is, I don't know, it's like, you notice it's not one thing, it's everything, right? A completely separate business. And the quality here, mm. if you like jerky, I mean, God, hopefully I'll do, maybe I'll get a partnership or something together where we'll have some infused jerky because this is just incredible. The, I mean, the everything in there was incredible and a small batch, you know, really caring, whether it's the environment, the soil, everything. And again, it's just very, what Owls is trying to do too, this is, this is very synergistic with Owls. And so, um, just in awe, and this is, I, I, I'm telling you, this is, I'm delighted, pig and muck over here. Um, okay, so we're gonna go check out the farm now. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this week's video. If you like the content and want to see more, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with every new video as they're released. And don't forget to leave a comment if you want to be entered into our weekly giveaway to get some Al's products. Congratulations to this week's winner. Please make sure to reach out to us on Instagram to claim your prize. Thanks again for watching everybody. See you next week.